your love for God, part two. In our previous teaching, we looked at how you can love the Lord your God with all your heart. We first of all looked at why we need to love God. Why do we need to love God? In other words, why are we learning about loving God? We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, where the Bible says, An eye has not seen, or even an ear a head, or even a heart comprehending of what the Lord will do to them who love the Lord. So, you and me, we need to love God. Why? Because there is something which God has promised for those who love Him. Something big that not even an eye has seen, not even an ear has heard, and not even a heart coming to comprehend of it. Just imagine. So, it is important for you and me to love God. And we extended to say, now, how can we love our God? We read in Mark chapter 12, uh, verse 30, the Bible says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Meaning that we can love God in four dimensions. In part one of this teaching, we learned that we learned how we can love the Lord our God with all our heart. And tonight, in this part two, we want to go further. How can we love the Lord our God with all our soul? Because the Bible says we must love the Lord our God with all our heart and then with all our soul. Having learned that to love the Lord our God with all our heart requires us that we should have the Holy Spirit inside our heart. We now are supposed to see how we can love the Lord our God with all our soul. How do we love Him with all our soul? We previously read uh, in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 where the Bible says, Guard your heart. We said, you cannot guard a heart that is impudent. So to love the Lord your God with all your heart means that you must have the Holy Spirit inside your heart. And then you'll be able to guard the heart that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Tonight, how can you love the Lord your God with all your soul? We are going to... Uh, to read our Bible in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And for this text, we are going to read in KJV. KJV, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Listen very well here. The Bible says God formed a man. How? He said he formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Look at what uh, we are getting. A soul. What is a soul? There has been sayings that a man is made up of three things. The body, the soul, and the spirit. But what is our text telling us? The Bible says man was formed by the dust and then the dust plus the breath resulted into a living soul. Meaning that a soul is a product of two things. A soul is, is a product of the body and the spirit. If you take the body, that is the dust, from the ground, and then adding the spirit of the Lord, the breath, we come up with the what? 
with a soul, a living soul. The Bible says, dust from the ground, and then the breath from the Lord, making a living soul, which means a soul is just a product. A soul is like a fruit. A soul is like the outcome. A living soul coming from the dust or the body and the spirit. So in other ways, we can say a person, a man who is a living soul is made up of a spirit and a body. The two make up a living soul. Let us proceed. And as we go, we'll, we'll start understanding better. We need to, uh, to know first what a soul is. When we understand what a soul is, and then we'll be able to understand how we can love God with all our soul. How can we love our God with all our soul? You need to realize that a soul is like a living person, is like a man himself. When we read Ezekiel chapter 18, uh, verse 4, the Bible says, The soul that sins is the one that shall die. Because people are like complaining that, am, am I going to die because of the sin of my daughter, because of the sins of my son, the sins of my father? But the Bible said, the soul that sin is the one that will die. Meaning that the person who sins is the one that will die. So a soul is like a living person, a living being. Other version they say, and now a man became a living being. Meaning that a living being as a result of a body and a spirit. Man is made up of two the body and a spirit and these two they come up with a living soul how can we love our god with all our soul with all our soul we need now to understand what a soul is in details let us read genesis chapter 34 verse 8 genesis 34 verse 8 I lead. But Hamma spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. A soul is like a collection of desires, a collection of feelings, the affection. It's like a flute, it's like the product as we read uh, from uh, Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 7 that a soul is like the resulting of the body and the spirit, the breath of the Lord. So it's like a collection, the fruit, the product, the desires. Where, where are the desires coming from? Where is the affectionate coming from? Where do we get uh, the feelings? That means there must be something in a man that will bring the actions, that will bring the desires, that will bring the actions of a man. There must be something. And what is it? So we must understand it that a soul is like the product, the fruit, the resulting effect, that which comes after something has happened. Let us read another scripture. Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 46. Luke chapter 1 verse 46. Luke chapter 1. I read. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. How can you magnify the Lord with, with your soul? That's what we are learning tonight because the bible says we must love the lord our god with all our soul so to love the lord our god with all our soul is actually magnifying the lord with our soul how do we magnify the lord with our soul yes it is true that the bible speaks of 
these three things, the body, the soul, and the spirit. When we read in 1, Thess uh, 1, 1 Thessalonica uh, chapter 5, verse 23, 1 Thessalonica chapter 5, verse 23, the Bible says, you must preserve everything, the whole of your spirit, the whole of your body, and the whole of your soul till the coming of Jesus. Meaning that all of these things must be, must, must be what? Must be preserved. And as you preserve all of these three things, it means you are loving God with all your soul. You are magnifying God with your soul. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. The question is, how do you magnify the Lord with your soul? You have to go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, The spirit and a body together, they made a living soul. The dust from the ground, plus the bless of the Lord, they came up with a what? With a living soul. So a soul is a product of two. Now, how do you magnify the Lord with your soul? We are going to read another scripture, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I want you to understand clearly before I explain. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I read, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh this the bible is talking about two things here the spirit and the flesh and in genesis chapter uh, 2 verse 7 there are also two things the spirit and the body the flesh so the bible says you must walk in spirit and and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh which means of the two of the two things god brought to bring a man the dust from the ground and the spirit. He said, you must walk in spirit. Remember that the breath of the Lord is the one that is uh, his spirit. And then as he breathed into the first man, Adam, Adam went on to sin. And then the whole world was corrupted. Meaning that the breath of the Lord that was unto man was corrupted till the coming of Jesus. So when one receives Jesus, it actually means now there is a replacement of the spirit. The Adamic spirit is being repressed by the spirit of the Lord. That's what we call salvation. Salvation is when your own spirit is being mixed with the spirit of the Lord so that now the spirit of the lord becomes dominant in your life when we read uh, romans chapter 8 verse 16 the bible says when his spirit dwells in us he is going to testify with us that we are the children of god meaning that once you are on your own and saved you only have your own spirit and when his spirit comes into you, then you become your own, you, you, you have your own spirit with a small s, and then his spirit with a bigger s. And you have learned uh, biology, some of you, there's what we call dominant and recessive. A small s is recessive, while a big s spirit is dominant. So, which means you have both of those spirits, but the spirit of the Lord is dominant in your life. That's why you are called saved. When we read Job chapter 32 verse 8, the Bible says there is a spirit in a man, but it is the breath of the Lord that gives him understanding. There is a spirit in a man, but the breath of the Lord gives him understanding meaning that man shall not lie on his own spirit but shall lie on the spirit of the lord so the bible says walk 
in the spirit. It means that when you walk in the spirit, what will be happening? The Bible talks about the fruit of the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, what will be happening is that you start manifesting in the fruit of the spirit. You start producing the fruit of the spirit. Suddenly, there is love in you. There is goodness in you. There is kindness in you. Why? Because of the seed of the Holy Spirit that is in you. That's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit. Now, how do we link it with the are loving God with your soul. You are loving God with your soul if you are producing the fruit of the Spirit. Remember the two things. Dust from the ground and then the Spirit of the Lord. Two things. And these two made a living soul. Now the Bible in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says walk in spirit. So it's like saying forget about the dust of the ground. Focus on the spirit. Focus on waking on the spirit. Build it. Give it food. Be in prayer. Be listening to the word. Maintain him. No anger. Be forgiving. That means you are walking in spirit and as you do that that means you start producing the fruit of the Spirit. So it is that fruit of the Spirit that magnifies the Lord. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. How? That means her character, her doings, her speakings, everything she was doing was like the fruit of the Spirit, was like the character of Jesus. So she was like magnifying the Lord with his own soul. So to love the Lord with all your soul is like magnifying the Lord by producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Is forgetting about the body, is forgetting about the dust of the ground, but focusing on the Spirit of the Lord. Forgetting about your own understanding, that is forgetting about your own spirit. And then you focus on the Lord himself. How can you love the Lord your God with all your soul? You can only love the Lord your God with all your soul if you are walking in spirit and producing the fruit of the spirit. It means you cannot love the Lord your God with all your soul if the spirit is not in you. The Bible says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. If you don't want to fulfill the last of the flesh, then you must walk in spirit. You must have the Holy Spirit in you. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, I tell you, he will manifest in the fruit of the Spirit. Are you loving God with all your soul? You are loving God with all your soul if, you, if your character is cast likeness, if your attitudes are cast likeness, if you have the character of Jesus, if people can see in you love, joy, kindness, goodness, patience, and all those fruit of the Spirit you can see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit. You are loving God with all your soul if you are producing the fruit of the Spirit. A living soul is like a product. A living soul is like a fruit. A living soul is like a character. What people see, what do people see in you? Do they see Jesus? If people see Jesus in you, that means you'll be like Mary. She said, my soul magnifies the Lord. How do you magnify the Lord with your soul? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must be inside your heart and you must nurture him. You must feed him. You must always refresh him. You must always be filled and then you shall magnify the Lord with your soul. This is how you can love the Lord your God with all 
your soul. Next, we'll be looking at how you can love the Lord your God with all your mind. How you can love the Lord your God with all your mind. This will be in our next teaching. Just remain connected to Light Carriers Church here on our Facebook page as well as on YouTube channel. We are also on WhatsApp, a group that has different countries, more than 20 countries, and we share the word on a daily basis. Be connected and your life will never be the same. May the grace of our Lord, may the peace of our Lord, may his goodness dwell in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that you will glow to produce the fruit of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will glow to show the character of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed and light is upon your life. God bless you till we meet again in our next teaching.